how to set up WireGuard. The first thing we need to do is pick a server host to install our WireGuard VPN tunnel onto. You can select any server host. I'm going to be choosing Vulture. This is my referral link. I'll put this referral link in the description below. If you sign up with this referral link, you'll save a bit of money and I'll make a bit of money. All right, guys, so once you've clicked on the referral link, it will take you to vulture.com. Once here, you want to click this big blue button on the top right hand corner here. Left click on it to sign up. You'll then be brought to the registration page where you'll need to create your account. Simply enter in your email address, a password of your choosing, accept the terms and conditions and complete the capture and then scroll down and create your account. You'll then be brought to the billing page where you'll either need to link your card or link your PayPal email address. All right, guys, I already have an account, so I'm going to hit log in and not create another account. And then I'm going to put in my information here. And then hit log in. Once you've logged in, you'll be brought to the Vulture dashboard. To launch a server, you'll need to click products here. I'm already on products. And then all you need to do is click this plus symbol here to deploy a new server. Left click on it. It's on the top right hand corner. The server that you want to choose is Cloud Compute. You'll then want to scroll down and then you'll want to pick the location of your server. Your VPN IP address will be the same as the country that you pick. Please note that Atlanta and New York are some of the cheapest servers. So I'm going to go with New York. So I'm just going to left click on it here and then continue scrolling down. Next, you'll need to pick the operating system. I'm going to pick Ubuntu and then pick the latest version of Ubuntu 20.04 and 64 bit. Left click on it and then it's selected and scroll down again to the server size for the server size that is totally dependent on the amount of people you're going to want to host on your VPN server you will need a server with IPv4 address every server except the cheapest $2.50 a month server comes with an IPv4 address so for setting up a WireGuard VPN you'll need to pick at a minimum the $3.50 a month server and this is the one I'm going to be choosing so you get 10 gigabyte SSD one CPU 512 megabytes of RAM and 500 gigabytes bandwidth. So left click on it to select it and then continue scrolling down. Here you have additional features such as to enable IPv6 and then a bunch of other features that cost a little bit extra. I'm not going to select any of these. You also have the option to add a startup script. However, I'm not going to do that and an SSH key, which I'm also not going to do. And then here you'll need to choose a server host name. Let's go with WireGuard VPN. And once you've done that, you can now deploy your server. Navigate to the bottom right hand corner and choose deploy now. Left click on it. It should take under a minute to deploy your server. All right, guys, as you can see, the status has now changed to running. To get your server's IP address and root admin login details, all you need to do is left click on your server. And then just scroll down. And as you can see, you've got your IP address here, your username and your password. The next thing we're going to be doing is installing the WireGuard client onto our device and installing an SSH client of your choice. For me, it's going to be putty. Let's start off by installing the WireGuard client. So I'm just going to click this tab here, which will take me to WireGuard.com. So make sure you navigate to this address. Once you're here, simply click installation. And now click the WireGuard installer for your appropriate operating system. So as you can see, there are many different operating systems here. For me, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to be downloading the 64-bit version. Left click on it and the download will start. Once that's been downloaded, let's go ahead and download our SSH client. So I'm just going to navigate to the next tab here and you're going to be navigating to putty.org. Once you're here, you're going to need to click the hyperlink text here. Left click on it and it will take you to the download page. Scroll down to where it says package files here and you're going to need to pick the installer for the correct operating system. For me, I'm on Windows and I'm going to go with the 64-bit Windows installer. Left click on this piece of text here to start the download. All right, so once you've downloaded the WireGuard installer and the Putty installer, let's go ahead and install both these clients here. So the first thing you need to do is just scroll to the bottom and then left click on this arrow here and then click open to open up the WireGuard installer. Once the installation completes, the WireGuard client will open. Minimize this for the time being. Now let's install Putty. So again, navigate to the bottom here and navigate to the bottom left-hand corner, click the arrow, and then click open to start the installer. 
Once the installation window opens, click Next. Choose the directory of your PuTTY installation. I'm just going to go with the default. Click Next. And on Product Features, simply hit Install again. And now you've also installed PuTTY. Click Finish. Once installed, let's generate a shortcut for WireGuard client and let's generate a shortcut for the PuTTY client. So just minimize your browser for the time being. Once you're on your desktop, navigate to the bottom left hand corner here to the search box and left click on it and then search WireGuard. Once you've done that, click Open File Location here and now right click on the WireGuard shortcut here and go Create Shortcut. Then click Yes and then close the file explorer here, then go back to the bottom right hand corner search box again, left click on it and search PuTTY. Once you've done that, click on open file location, right click on the PuTTY shortcut and go create shortcut again, and then click yes to send it to the desktop and close out of the file explorer again. And now, as you can see, we've got our WireGuard shortcut and we've got our PuTTY shortcut. Let's double click on PuTTY to open it. To log into our server and set up WireGuard, we're going to be using PuTTY's terminal. We'll need the server login details from Vulture. So open up your browser again here, and then navigate to the Vulture tab. Left click on it. Once you're here, you'll need to grab the IP address of your server. Simply click on the copy icon here, left click on it, and then open back up PuTTY and paste in the IP address, also known as hostname. Once that's done, you wanna leave port 22 open, you want to make sure SSH is selected and then click open to open up your PuTTY terminal window. When you first connect to your server, PuTTY will give you a security alert. Don't mind this too much as you are connecting to your own server. Click yes and now you'll be greeted with one line of text that says login as. Here you'll need to enter your username which is root in this case. So you're just going to copy root here. Then you're going to go back to your terminal and to paste in the PuTTY terminal, you need to right click to paste and then hit enter. Once you've done that, you'll be asked for a password and just go back to your Vulture server here and copy the password for your server. Left click on it and then click on the PuTTY window again and then right click to paste in your password. Once pasted, it won't be displayed in the PuTTY terminal window. However, if you did right click, it has been pasted and all you need to do is click enter and you'll be logged in. Alright guys, we are logged into our server. You will know when you're logged into your server when you receive this welcome message here that says welcome to Ubuntu. Let's maximize this window here so we can see the terminal a lot better. Alright, let's enter our first command into the PuTTY terminal here. So this is a brand new server. The best first practice command to do on a brand new server is to update your server. So simply type apt space update and then hit enter to update your server. Once your server has been updated, let's upgrade our server. It's always good to upgrade your server after doing an update. Simply type apt space upgrade and then hit enter. And then it will ask you, do you want to continue? Y for yes, N for no. Hit Y and then hit enter. Once your server has been upgraded, you are now ready to install WireGuard on your server. So I'm just going to grab the commands here. So I'm going to go back to my browser and then click this tab here. And this will take me to a GitHub repository provided by Angristan, which is called WireGuard-install. I'm just going to scroll down here to where the commands are. I'll actually include these commands here, these three commands, in the description below. So you won't actually need to go to this web address simply to show appreciation as he's the one that created the batch script to easily install WireGuard. All right, so let's copy our first command here. So the first command is the curl command here, which is the first line. So I'm just going to copy the first line here. All this will simply do is download the GitHub repository here hosted by Angristan. Go back to your PuTTY terminal and then right click to paste. Once you've done that, hit enter. And now you're ready for your next command. The next command is chmod, which is to make the installer executable. Copy it, go back to the PuTTY terminal and right click to paste it in. Once you've done that, hit enter again, and then you're ready for the third and final command. So I'm just going to copy the third command here and then go back to the PuTTY terminal and right click this third command we'll begin installing WireGuard onto our server. Hit enter to start the script. Great, so you'll be greeted with this message that says, I need to ask you a few questions before starting the setup. You can leave the default options and just press enter if you are okay with them. 
The default options of this installer are very good, so you don't actually really need to change them. However, if you do, they are configurable. It will ask you the IP address of your server, and it will give it to you. So that's the IP address of my server, and all you need to do is hit enter if it's correct. Next, you'll be asked for the public interface. By default, it gives you ENS3. Hit enter. WireGuard interface name, WG0. I'm going to hit enter again. The server's WireGuard IPv4 address. 10.66.66.1. I'm going to hit enter. Remember, all these commands are configurable. WireGuard IPv6 address, FD4242421. 42 42 hit enter. WireGuard port is 64369. Hit enter. It will then give you a DNS resolver. Hit enter again. It will then give you a second DNS resolver, which is exactly the same as the first. I'm going to hit enter. And then you'll be greeted with this message that says, OK, that was all I needed. We are ready to set up your WireGuard server now. You will be able to generate a client at the end of the installation. Press any key to continue. All you need to do is hit enter again, and it will begin installing. You'll now be asked by the script for the client name. So you want to pick a username. For me, I'm going to go with Websplaining. You can go with any name you want. Once you've entered a client name, hit enter. It will then give you the client's WireGuard IPv4 address, hit enter here, and then again the IPv6 address, hit enter. Once you've done that, it will generate a configuration file or config file for that particular client. So as you can see, you have a big QR code here, which you can scan for your iOS or Android phone. I'm going to be showing you how to do this on my phone a bit later in the video. For now, let's focus setting up WireGuard for our PC. So as you can see, it says it is also available in root slash WG0 dash client dash websplaining, which is the client's name, dot config. Type ls to list the root directory's contents ls and then hit enter. As you can see, we've got two files here. We've got the websplaining.configuration file. And we've got the wireguard-install.sh client, which we use to install WireGuard onto our server. And we need to see what are the contents of that configuration file. To do this, we're going to need to utilize the cat command. First of all, copy the configuration file's name. So I'm just going to hover over this and highlight all of it and you don't need to right click copy in the PuTTY terminal. Once you've copied that piece of information, type the following, C-A-T or cat space, and then right click to paste in the configuration file name. Once you've done that, all you need to do is hit enter. And now we are seeing what's inside that configuration file. We need to copy all this information here from interface all the way down to allowed IPs. To do this, simply highlight all of this here. So again, just to remind you from interface all the way down to allowed IPs. Once you've done that, open up the WireGuard client here, left click on it. And then what we need to do is add a tunnel. So navigate down to the bottom left hand corner here and click on the arrow next to add tunnel. Left click on it and then click add empty tunnel and left click. You'll now need to paste in all the copied information. So let's delete all the contents first and then right click in this white box here and paste. And what you've basically done here is you've pasted in your public key. Once you've done that, you need to pick a name. So I'm going to go with a nice simple name, which is the location of the server. So for me, I'm going to go with USA because that's where the server location is. And then once you've done that, all you need to do is click save. And as you can see, the USA tunnel has been added. And now all we need to do to connect to the WireGuard server that we've hosted on Vulture is click on activate. So left click on activate and you'll be immediately connected. And there we go, I get a nice message on Windows here that says the USA tunnel has been activated. And now let's test to see if it actually has worked. Open back up your browser here and go over to google.com and then simply type in what is my IP address. Once you've done that, hit enter. And then Google will provide you with your IP address. As you can see, this IP address here is the exact same IP address of my server, which is 207. 148.25.221. If we go back to Google here, you can see that 207, 148.25.221 is the exact same IP address. Great guys, so now we've set up WireGuard on our PC. Now let's set it up on our mobile device. For this part of the tutorial, I'm going to be using an Android phone. However, it will work exactly the same for iOS. As you can see, we've been disconnected from PuTTY as we have not entered any commands into the terminal. That's fine for now, just hit OK and then scroll back up so the QR code is fully visible for our device to scan with. 
Alright guys, I'm just going to quickly switch over to my Android device now, so bear with me a second. Alright guys, I'm now on my Android phone. So let's begin by installing the WireGuard client onto our Android phone here. So all I'm going to do is click the Google Play Store. Once you've done that, type in WireGuard. And pick the first one that shows up. Then hit install to begin the installation of the WireGuard client for your mobile device. Once WireGuard has been installed, simply hit open. And now the WireGuard client is open. To add a tunnel, all you need to do is click the plus symbol on the bottom right hand corner of your device. So I'm just going to tap on it here. And then what you want to do is you want to choose scan from QR code. Tap on scan from QR code here, which is the second option. This will now open up your camera and all you need to do is scan the QR code that's been generated by the PuTTY terminal. Once you've scanned it in, all you need to do is give it a tunnel name. So I'm just going to go with the server location again, which is USA, and then tap create tunnel. And there we go, the USA tunnel has been added. As you can see, it's currently off. Let's tap on it to switch on the VPN. You'll be greeted with this connection request notification here. All you need to do is tap OK. And there we go, your WireGuard VPN is on. Let's check on our IP address to see if it's the same as the server. So I'm just going to go back to my home screen here, and I'm going to tap on my browser and type what is my IP address and then tap search. And as you can see at the top of the DuckDuckGo search engine, it says your IP address is 207.148.25.221 and that is in New Jersey, United States. All right guys, that concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and it helped you, please remember to give this video a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. And I'll see you on the next one. Is it so hard to let you go?